everybody. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming to check in on the day. As you can see, I have most of my voice back. It um, has been quite a journey and it's quite interesting to me because I was traveling during the whole coronavirus uh, thing that's still going on and, and there were people on the plane wearing masks um, and as I coughed I thought oh my gosh they're probably all freaked out you know and uh, when you fly southwest um, you get to pick where you want to sit, sit and I made sure I was coughing or clearing my throat as the row was going down. <laughs> See if I could get a whole row by myself. But no, no way. On two of my flights, it was completely packed. So someone got the short straw and had to sit with me. What I find interesting about viruses, <laughs> okay, this is to this is a channel about floss tube, cross stitch, <laughs> but um my channel is a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, so what I find funny, having just been traveling, is um, <clears throat> that people will wear their mask <laughs> and they'll have their mask like below their nose, like it's just covering their mouth. Duh, that doesn't work. <laughs> I want to go up and just kind of snap their mask. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the news is what makes us the most panicked about everything, you know. Um, because what I find interesting is that I have basically had the same virus that my friend Two Martini Stitchers and Sambri Stitches, my, my sweet Becca, that they've had and I am on the other side of the country from them. Uh, so viruses just travel and the whole thing, I mean we had such a discussion when I was at the road to California about the hand sanitizer. That stuff is poison and really washing your hands with soap and water is ten times better than rubbing Purell around. But that's just me. That's just me. So, <clears throat> but I've been back home. I uh, haven't had my uh, voice, though my voice is almost back, which is kind of nice. Because uh, I do like to talk. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm being fearless today. Um, so I think my videos, uh, I've decided I'm evolving them a little bit as I learn. Uh, I want to share uh, a little bit of, um, I don't know if it'd be updates, but some of my life history people seem, I know I'm curious about people, and so there are, everybody has a, a bag full of stories, and it's always fun to have a new audience for them. <laughs> then you don't feel so old, like you're telling the same story over and over again. Um, but I thought I'd uh, intersperse a little bit of that while we stitch. Um, and I wanted to give you an update about where I'm at and what I've been doing. And um, just a little bit of this and that. I know that... Um, I've been trying to catch up on a lot of floss tube. I have still not caught up. Um, you know, I didn't have time when I was at road, and then when I came back, I was, I was just kind of um, in a zone, I guess you'd call it. Um, I did get some cross stitching done, which um, was a, a great um, kind of like a um, a rest for me was to cross stitch and not think about a lot. I did start a journal. I think I mentioned that in the last I bought um, this journal, but I'm slowly uh, figuring out how to use it. And I think I am liking it. I'm only using it in my cross-stitch life, not my quilting life, because my quilting life 
is already so out of control there's no no organizing it but since my cross stitch life is still new it's uh, a little bit more manageable so what I've done is like for the month I just wrote every day what I stitched on and I kind of like it I started it on the 10th so I don't know about the first week but um, I like looking at it um, because I can tell when my whips, my basket of whips that I have here, when something didn't get stitched. And I would like to take a few stitches on every whip I have. So that's a way, a quick look. It doesn't mean I have to stitch on every whip every day, but just to see where my focus is. And then in the bottom empty corner, I'm writing when I get something completed or a segment completed. In the back, I started writing and um, as I go along, I'll figure this out. I started writing uh, the name of my project and the fabric that it is uh, being stitched on because uh, I know some of you are interested but I have no idea half the time and so I thought well if I started doing that then I could at least answer your questions because there have been some questions so I've, I've been it's simple it's something I got at TJ Maxx and um, I'm enjoying it so what else well um, I have some haul. I'll do that. Uh, I ordered a bag because I haven't received it yet, but I ordered uh, the pattern and the... Well, I've ordered... Okay. I've ordered two patterns to be delivered here where I'm at. And one is the Suffrage Act that the Stitching with the Sister Lees is doing. And in my brain, this is how my brain works, I can't work on a project unless it has its own project bag. That's a, a little bit of an OCD thing. And so what was I going to do? That, that pattern, oh, it has to be here somewhere because I actually kitted that up at the West here in Tucson, which is a needlework gift shop. Um, I guess I, I have it put away for now, so I'll have to get that back out. But I needed a project bag, and everyone has been talking about um, Anna Colado uh, Stitch Toolbox bags. And so, you know, that's the thing about watching floss tube. You stop the floss tube, you go and you look up the link and decide what you're going to do. But when I saw this bag, I just really loved it. And um, she does a fabulous job. She really knows. Oh, look at this little uh, binoculars on the end here. But I just really loved this fabric. Isn't that beautiful? So that is going to be my um, suffrage uh, act. And then there was all these um, little wooden hearts. They're so sweet. Little wooden heart buttons. So I'm very excited about that. Oh, and there's a little charm too. And the charm says made with love. Oh, I can't lose that. So I, um, I now have a project bag so I can begin that um, in February. I'll just stick it in my whip my whip bag. And then, let's see, what else did I order? I ordered this pattern because I just loved it. It's a Bent uh, Creek. Um, it says, a journey of a thousand miles must begin with a single step. I don't know, that is, I just love, I live in tree country, so, um, <clears throat> I love that. And then I saw this fabric, and I had bought a fabric um, through Acorns and Threads uh, by them uh, before, and it uh, has a special, it's a linen, and it has this special, I'm not going to unwrap it, 
because it's so cute. Um, but it has a special ink printing on the linen. And this one is called Dark Spell. So something creepy will have to be stitched in that. <clears throat> I have been staying busy, resting my voice, so I haven't been going out and talking to anybody. Um, I'll give you a sneak peek of where I'm at. <clears throat> so on my Renato Perlin La Foresta di Fanis, uh, Fanes, I did um, another, let me see if I can use this as the back so you can see the, let's see if we can get some light on the situation. Yeah, so I did this little bush. Um, we have these vine maples that grow in the mountains and they are all under the trees and when you drive over the pass in the fall they all turned a brilliant red and orange so that's what this reminds me of. So I got one more little bush done and that's all I did on this this month. <laughs> So, oh, I dropped my thread. Oh, that's just like obnoxious, isn't it? Here's the big disappointment for me. I just wanted to, I couldn't believe this. I was going, wah, 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 wah. Yeah. I, I can throw a good tantrum, let me tell you. I was stitching on my Sleeping Bee, which is uh, the blue flower. And it's a sow that's on the internet, although my project is going into timeout. Because what I found out, here's what I've done. So this is what I did so far. Okay. When I was stitching, I was going, why is it when I looked on the hashtag, everybody else that's doing it, the dark part of their bee doesn't look this dark. And so when I was looking at the pattern, I said, well, it looks kind of a grayish kind of onyx color, and the, the legs and the antenna are dark. But why is mine dark? So then I thought, did I choose the wrong color? Really? So then I went into my floss ring, and I looked up, and I said, no, it says that symbol is called blackboard, uh, blackboard, and that's what I've been using. And then I looked down at the pattern, and it said blackboard weeks, and this is blackboard simple uh, simply um, shaker. Now, I almost had a high speed come apart because I thought, oh my gosh. And then the other color that is used on the legs in this pattern is um, called... Um, onyx but it is onyx by weeks and I have onyx by simply shaker so my legs are gonna look gray 
and my body's going to look black. The complete opposite of what everybody else's is. So I didn't know what to do about that. I thought, how does one even rip out on 40 count? So I threw a little pout and I threw it all back in its beautiful, beautiful project bag, which Leanne made. Lost in floss. And we've lost our sweet Leanne. It's so hard. It's so hard when you lose somebody. Um, the only um, comfort I take is um, years ago when I used to be a runner. Yeah, I did. I used to be a runner. Uh, and I ran a marathon. <laughs> ran the whole freaking thing. Uh, <clears throat> my co-worker was training me and she was an ultra marathoner and she was helping me is what she was doing so when we weren't working we'd go out and hit the trails <laughs> and she'd give me tips and she'd run with me even though I was like a tortoise and she was like the hare you know and uh, we would run in the um, on the trails uh, around our area which um, is challenging because you have to watch for rocks and, and branches and that kind of thing but um, she was so kind and uh, we were both in our 50s and then I uh, ran the marathon I ran you know 5k's and 10k's and stuff like that but I ran a marathon and I was so proud of myself and she was so proud of me but she got cancer and and it was discovered accidentally in a, another you know minor surgery she was having and and um, I can remember to this day that um, a friend uh, a friend of ours was visiting us and um, it was like this wonderful um, meeting of these moments that turns out perfect. My friend was in hospice and I had not visited her because I thought I thought I'm going to get over there to the hospice house and I'm going to start blubbering and and she's she's not going to need that. She's going to need um support or whatever but um, so I, I was struggling with it and I was not going to go visit her in the hospice house and then this couple that our friends dear friends that were visiting turns out this is how the world works turns out he works for hospice and he, I was telling him I didn't want to go and he, he looked at me and he said you've got to go and it will be okay it will be okay. And so I said, okay, I'll see you guys later. And I went over there. And it was beautiful. She was beautiful. She was alert. She was sitting up eating a popsicle. And the next day we lost her. But I'll always remember what she told a friend of ours. Is She said, don't worry about me. I get to find out about the answers and the mystery before all of you. And I thought, wow, Leanne, she's where she gets to find out all the answers, all the things we prayed and wondered about. So, but I love that I have that project bag of hers. <sighs> okay, I digress from my progress here. Okay, so next is my um, waxing moon search the skies yes doing that with my dear friend Becca who made me cry today because she was crying she's a she's such a good soul and <clears throat> so I 
added. Uh, it's my little. I added another reindeer. So now we have three of them ready to pull the sleigh. Pretty soon I'm going to get to Santa and he won't have to be upside down. <laughs> My little drunk Santa. Yeah, yeah I, I love these sows because they really do kind of keep me um, motivated. Except for that B one. That B one. Okay. Oh, this is a good one here. And um, I made a decision. So here's my um, little Korean people. And so I, this is what they look like. This is sodastitch.com. And I've decided to do six of them. Uh, because it's my mom and dad, my sister and her husband, and me and my husband. So they'll be six. That's our family. So I'm, I'm going to pick out six of them. But I got, I got my little first little girl done. Isn't she adorable? And I did the back stitching, um, which um, was quite interesting. Back stitching, but I love my needle minder. It's too peeply outside. Yeah, I found out my my friend Danielle was wanting that one, but I got it first. Neener neener. <laughs> uh, so now I get to move on to a little boy. And if you don't read my woolly blog, uh, well, if you do, this will be redundant. But if you uh, don't, this will be a new story. Uh, I was in the um, Ontario airport uh, 10 minutes before my flight was to take off. And I looked up and my mind was just kind of processing, processing. And I said, my God, there's my cousin. Of course, this cousin lives in Virginia, you know, clear on the other side of the country. And I've only seen him once in the last 10 years, and that was at another cousin's wedding. And he was with his son, who the last time I saw his son was a little boy, and now he's out of college. I walked up and I touched his arm, and he looked up at me, Processing, processing, processing. And he goes, Anna? And I'm like, yeah. And it was like, it was the weirdest thing. This this kind of thing happens to me a lot where I'm like somewhere and, uh, out in the middle of nowhere and I'll run into somebody I know. And there was my cousin standing in the airport on the first of a four-leg flight back to Virginia. Okay. On to the next cell, which this is a freebie, so I don't have to worry about the chart. But I have a lot to share with you about this. So I finished page one. Page one of uh, The Emerald City by... Um, this is by Al Forestry Designs. So now I'm on to page two. And um, I'm excited about that. But this is what I wanted to share with you. I decided to, you know, um, do add a little bit of um, bling to my project. And so I, um, I got some Krynik. Have I got something for you? Now, everybody complains about the Krynik. And um, so I'm going to show you something. <clears throat> okay. So here's this Krynik. You know, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's springy. And as you sew with it, it gets... Um, 
it gets, you know, like uh, it starts doing this weird thing and it's just, it gets more and more, more and more, um, it gets more and more crazy. It's like, <clears throat> it's like my hair, you know, right here. It's out of control. But, I was sitting here thinking about that crime. Like, and you know, uh, well you may or may not know, but I'm also a stitcher in the quilting world. And I thought, this stuff reminds me of some of the pain in the behind stuff that I use when I'm stitching Sue Spargo's stuff. And the more you um, use it, the more it gets uh, more frayed. And then it gets harder and harder to pull through. So here's what I'm going to show you. And it worked like a dream. It worked like a dream. So the first thing I did see if I can do this. Okay, you, I know you're hanging on there like with bated breath. What has she come up with now? Oh. But, um, you have to, I'm like this, like, I'm like this ninja stitcher. I mean, look at this. <clears throat> Let me see. Look at this needle. It's totally bent. It's like I'm gripping it like with a... I'm strong. I'm a strong cross-stitcher. So, um, so I'm going to thread this needle with my needle threader in this Krynik. See how it just it just kind of frays all over the place, but I'm going to show you some. Oh, there it goes. So I'm getting it into my nail. <laughs> there it went. There it goes. There it went. I I suppose I could use my tool beforehand. Okay. So okay, I'm threading my. I'm threading my Krynik with my needle threader. Okay. So now, I have my Krynik. And you know, as you um, stitch, I'm just going to start dragging this stuff in and out of here. As you stitch your Krynik in and out, of your fabric. It gets worse and worse and you end up with a little bit of a, a rat's nest. Well here comes this thing and this is a thread zapper. <laughs> yes, there are tools and I don't tell G that I have one of these because he might want to borrow it for something in in, in the building world, and I don't want him to run. It's kind of like when you hide your scissors. So this thread zapper <laughs> is battery operated. It's got a, let me see if I can, it's got a little tiny, little metal thing at the tip. You see, thread zapper two, thread zapper two. And it's battery operated. And so, you put, what I did is I put my Krynik through the thread zapper. You see that? And then I zapped it. Did you see the smoke? And it seals off the end without making it bigger. So then I did the other end. Okay, watch here again. Let's see if I get it in front of my shirt. So I... 
See that smoke? And I sealed off the other end. And then I stitched my Dorothy's shoes with the Krynek and it never did the shredding thing. It stayed just like this, all melted together at the tip. Thread zapper too. And you know where I got it? Sue Spargo, her website. She is a um, stitcher in the quilting world. And I said, this is like a miracle. I am moving my thread zapper into my cross stitch. So that's my tip for the day. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Oh. My next one is my birthday. My birthday start last October. This I got from um, Stitchville, USA. Stony Creek Harvest Blessings. And I'm doing pretty good on that. I got um, I got him all done and I started my American Indian here and then my leaf down here. So now he's all there. And um, I don't know, there's something about this one that I just love. I love it. And so, um, but I feel like this is going to be done before um, winter's over. And finally, here, I moved on to block number two. Whoops. I got number one done and I've already outlined number two. So I'm going to do that. Um, I did see, let's see, on Kitten Stitcher, <coughs> she did a lovely job of um, finishing this and she did only eight blocks. She had four across and four here, and she didn't do that center block, so she didn't have the nine block layout. I really liked it, but since I'm not really making this for myself, well, I think I'm going to leave that center block and do all nine. <coughs> yeah, oh, left the ice reds down. I had to laugh. I've been watching floss tubes, and there's people who are talking about how their stitching looks good, and sometimes it doesn't look good, and and I think I, I don't know. I, I'm thinking to myself, it's X's, right? It's just making X's. I mean, what makes a good X and a bad X? I don't know, but I'm I'm like I think, and they're a little too critical of themselves because. I think all my X's are fantastic. X marks a spot, right? Yeah, so it's kind of funny how we can be about our stuff here. <clears throat> so today I'm going to stitch on my um, motto sampler. You know, this is by Heartstring Samplery. And um, we're going to be working on that a little bit. And I um, guess I should put glasses on, huh? So. I I have to, you know, when I'm catching up on um, all the floss tubes on Pumpkin Hollow, uh, these are all inspiring. 
inspiring floss tubes. But she has one project that is like a 30-year goal. I'm not going to be alive in 30 years. I can't have a 30-year goal. I've got to have I've got to have shorter goals than that cuz it's going to be a problem if I have 30 30 year goals. Oh my gosh, it's like holy moly. So this is um this is where I'm getting to on this one. No, I'm starting to fill in the flowers. And once I get it, those two big flowers filled in, I'll be over halfway there. It's so cool. It's so cool how I've been able to. And it's because of all of you guys that are looking on Instagram as I post pictures of this that, um, that I feel encouraged to keep going, you know. I'll, I think I'll have this done before summer. I mean, I'm already halfway there, just about. And um, you can get this. So I was a, I was a, I was a cross stitcher before cross stitching was cool. That's the motto that's going in my motto sampler. And you can get that from Acorns and Threads. They have the, the, the actual motto charted out. So if you have the um, motto sampler from uh, Heartstring Samplery, you can get that. Um, that I was a cross-stitcher before cross-stitching was cool. I can honestly say I have never been considered cool in my entire life. <laughs> I, but I, I can say I'm, I'm going to have this charted and stitched that I was a cool, I was a cross-stitcher because cross-stitching was cool because that's the truth. What did I do with that? Seven seven eight. Okay. I like that <laughs> Becca and I store our flosses the same way. We're not uh, bobbing people. If something is bobbinated, it was from years ago when I did it. Um, and then I have my caddy cross stitches. See how that thread sticks on there? I haven't lost a needle since I. <clears throat> did that so I uh, started putting those in my project um, yeah so I hope you guys have been doing well I hope you haven't had this uh, virus that's been going around um, it is um, seems to be one that hangs on I was lucky though. Um, my um, girlfriend uh, was traveling down to take care of her father. Her father's going to be 103. Oh no, he's already 103. He had his birthday this week along with my grandson. And um, so she was flying down here to, uh, it was her turn out of the sisters to take care of her dad. So since she was going to be on the bottom half of the United States and I'm on the bottom half, I said, how about we meet at, um, can you take a few days off from your dad and we meet at um, the road to California? Because I was going there not only for myself, but to take pictures for the quilt show, which I write for. And um, so since she was coming down, <laughs> I said, can you go by my house and pick up my inhalers? I for, uh, I forgot my inhalers. I haven't had to use them in years, in, in probably, not years, probably a year. And, uh, but I really felt a need that like I, I really could use them. So she went over to my house. That's, that's a good friend. She went over to my house and, and picked up, um, picked up my inhalers and brought them down with her. <laughs> so... 
That was really good. It's been kind of mild. In Central Oregon, we have what's called a January thaw, where um, it's basically like spring. And then usually once that happens in January, then winter comes back with a vengeance. So we'll have to see. But there wasn't a bit of snow on my front yard um, this week. It's been chilly here, though. And then next week um, I will be out of the loop because I will be at class. I am taking a class here in Tucson at Tanca Verde Ranch with Sue Spargo on stitching. And if you're interested, you'll be able to see some of that on my Quilt Roadie channel. Oh, and also, um, if you're even if you're not uh, a quilter, um, you might want to go to my Quilt Ready channel and watch the last video where um, uh, from the road to California because um, I there is a demo on the, on the video of uh, Clover came out with this really, really nifty um, pom-pom uh, maker, you know, and I know that, oh, I didn't need to cut that, oh well, um, I know that we make, uh, I mean, we want pom-poms on a string, but, but it was so fun to watch how, uh, how easy it was, and the, and the tool makes different size pom-poms, that was like, that was really cool. And one of the vendor booths, um, just to show you how we are influencing the quilting world, one of the vendor booths um, had cross stitch in it. Oh yeah. And not just one cross stitch. It had a nice little selection of cross stitch. Oh, those vendor booths are just enough. Oh, I forgot I have to do a giveaway. Oh my gosh. Okay, just kind of watch my back wall while I go get it, okay? Hang on, I'm coming back. I swear. Here I am. I'm coming back. I made it. So, um... One of my friends, <clears throat> I consider her a friend, uh, of course we only meet at quilt shows, and she's a, she a lot of times is a vendor at a quilt show, and um, she's like drop dead gorgeous. I mean, really, you know, when you think she's, I think she must be 59, 58, uh, I don't know. Well, her name is Marie. And you can find her on Facebook, uh, Le Secrets de Marie. She's from France. And she always has a booth, and she has adorable, adorable stuff. And um, she always gives me stuff to give away on, on, the, um, on my quilting um, videos. You know, I mean, a lot of, uh, it's a way of promoting business for a lot of the designers. And so I do have uh, occasional giveaways from designers on my uh, quilt roadies. But I thought, I need to give this away on stitch roadies. I'll put her link for her Facebook page down below. She makes absolutely adorable, adorable um items, decor items, quilts. She's been featured in um, Quilt Mania magazine. I, she might even have been in projects, um, primitive projects. Uh, she's uh, quite well known. Um, 
in the quilting world. Um, and so I bought the most adorable little embroidery kit from her. Um, and I'll, I'll show all that on um, my Quilt Roadie video. But she over dyed floss. She hand dyed floss. And it is um, amazing. So let's see if you can see those colors. They're kind of like a, a red, uh, a burgundy red or a brown red, a brown. Um, they are just absolutely gorgeous. Six strand, six strand. But this is how this is how awesome she is. She makes everything so freaking cute. She included. She tied each floss on these um, little. Buttons. They're like little wooden tabs of some kind. Can you see that? Yeah, there we go. Aren't they cute? They're so cute. One is a truck with a tree. One is a house. One is a sheep with a heart. And one's a heart with a star. And they're out of wood and they already have a hole punched in them. Oh, they're so cute. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to uh, give these away on this video, and all you have to do is um, please go check out her Facebook site. I will uh, put a link on there, but um, just say you love the floss. Make sure you say floss somewhere, and um, you'll get this beautiful little pack of, it's four four different ones and they're little wooden tabs. Oh, I'm so glad I remembered that. I'm so glad I remembered that. <clears throat> okay, I have some notes here. Oh, okay, here's, uh, I know I've talked about calm creations, but I'm kind of attracted to the beetles that she's stitching, so if you get a chance to go see that, I, I'm really, uh, I'm really loving that, and um, tranquil stitches was uh, two martini stitches. Talked about tranquil stitches. That I went to tranquil stitches, and now I'm talking about her because she's doing something about mania, which I don't, I don't fully understand what's going on on mania. But she's like picking. 20 things to start stitching somewhere in the future. Not sure when that is, but 20 starts. I'm like, holy moly. Pass the Valium, please. Oh. Um, but it's fun to watch her flip through her pack of patterns. And I mean, you almost can't even concentrate because you're. When she goes to, she doesn't look at what pattern she's going to choose to to look at. She just kind of grabs it out of the shelf, and and then she sets it in front of her. And then, if it's in contention, she puts it on the right. If it's not in contention, she puts it on the left. And then when she gets down to the ones on the right, then she flips through there and decides which one's going to make whatever mania is mania. And I'm telling you, it's like watching a freaking scary movie. It's like when you see your hand go to grab, grab. There you're going, don't grab that side. Go to the right, go to the left, whatever. But when she finally brings the pile out, oh, man. And then she talks about each one that she has in her pile. Oh, man. This cross-stitching is very dangerous. There should actually be one of those warning signs like they put on drugs, you know, where they tell you all the side effects and then they tell you you're going to die. On each cross-stitch pattern, they should put, like, warnings. Be careful, you're going to be broke. Be careful, you're going to have 10,000 lifts. Be careful, be careful, be careful. And then, and then maybe the Supreme Court needs to concentrate on that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, back to stitching. 
I need to be calm. Calm. Oh, yes. So, um, but uh, I asked Kindred Stitcher, and she said, she said that, you know, it's 2020, so you pick 20 projects out. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that would just like... I mean, I actually am sweating just even thinking about it. My voice, I'm losing my voice just thinking about it. You know, but, um, you know. Uh, and then my friend um, Stitch All the Things. She's going down the slippery slope of Buttermilk Basin. Oh. One loves to be a virus of some sort, don't we? Yes, we're contagious. We infect each other. As you can see, because obviously the same virus that's on the other side of the United States is infected me. Yeah. It, um, yeah, I'm trying to get my voice back before I start my class on Sunday. I'm really looking forward to that class. You know, more stitching. But then I won't be, for a week, I won't be doing any cross stitch. I'm not even bringing any cross stitch with me because it's all about the embroidery stitching you know, on wool. Yeah, it's gorgeous though. Absolutely gorgeous. And let's see. I think, I think that's all that I can think about to talk about, except for I did get my um, charity chart from Bendy Stitches, the acceptance chart for the Parkinson's, um, which um, brings me to Aaron the Blind Stitcher. See how things connect up? He has Parkinson's. Oh my gosh, the guy is legally blind, has Parkinson's, is cross-stitching up a storm. Yeah, and and let me tell you, I don't think he's looking at his exes and saying, these are good exes or bad exes. I mean, and his work looks awesome. And oh my God, you know, his sense of humor is one of those. It's the kind I like. It's the kind that G has, you know, it's the, it's the kind that um, catches you off guard. Like if you're not paying attention and you're not listening, you suddenly realize they said something totally funny and absurd and you, and you can't catch your breath because you're laughing so hard. That's Aaron, the blind stitcher. Because how could you not? I mean, you got Parkinson's. <laughs> you got, you're, you're legally blind and and you chose cross stitch as your medium of choice these days. I mean, the guy cracks me up. He totally cracks me up. You know, yeah. You just gotta put one foot or one thread in front of the other, huh? Well, I've almost gotten to the end of this uh, one petal, which is great. I hope you guys have a great, great last few days of January. Of course, you know, it may take forever to load this sucker up, so you may be watching this January video in February. And um, maybe uh, by the next one, my little... Um, oh, the latest kit. Okay, so, okay, two last things, and then I'm going for sure is um, the Tranquil Stitcher. Yeah, the Tranquil Stitcher, I think, was the one that brought up the fact that there was a chart or a thought circulating that um, that you, that they will be stitching along in memory of Leanne, which I, I just think that's such a great thing. And... Um, it's called, uh, it's by Heartstring Sampler, and it's called Baby It's Cold Outside. So I ordered it, you know, I ordered the chart, 
you know, there's nothing better, I think, than stitching in the memory of someone because then it's like they're there with you. And I might have to move the bee out of Leanne's project bag and move that one in. And then <laughs> blitz stitch. Oh my God, he showed this one. He showed this one chart. It's humongous. It's gigantic. Why do I pick big projects? I pick stitch in, stitch intensive projects. I need to pick a you know like I need to pick simpler projects. But when he showed this, you know, I'm a freak for Christmas. And he showed and I like red. And I like Quaker. So the fact that there's a Quaker Christmas out there with all the Christmas songs in between all the other stitching, the titles of Christmas songs, I was like sold. I was emailing Janine and Acorns and Threads and saying, get me that chart and put it in my bag. I will pick it up when I get back to Oregon. Oh, yeah. But I need to think about this because it seems like I am totally attracted to BAPS. Yeah, I think I'm totally attracted to that. So we shall see. We shall see. But heck, you know, 30-year project, Pumpkin Hall is a project that's on the 30-year plan. Gosh, she must be like 15 years old. knows. Anyway, have a great day. Have a great week. See you in February.